Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to another session of our series, uh, Morning Reflections on the 99 Names of Allah. Inshallah, today uh, we're in session 10 and we'll be covering the names of Al Wahid, Al Ahad, and Al Samad, uh, names that mean the one, the only, and the refuge, this concept of singularity uh, within Allah. Um, and so, uh, without further ado, inshallah, let's begin. Bismillah. Uh, the oneness of Allah, this is a foundation of Islam in the sense that uh, the, the simple premise is that God is one, indivisible, and unique. This is at that foundation, that core, uh, that concept of tawhid, uh, that uh, at the end of the day, regardless of our different streams of Islam, our different persuasions, different uh, uh, interpretations of communities, this is kind of our uh, foundational stone that, that is there in addition to the Prophet of the Prophet ﷺ, that this is just one that uh, is definitive. Um, and you have in these names Al-Wahid and Al-Ahad that denote not just this oneness, but this uniqueness as well, that Allah is one. And uh, what, what needs to come of this is not just the theological acknowledgement that uh, Allah is one or the Creator is one, but also um, that the believers, the creation is also uh, in this oneness, is from this oneness, and uh, that Allah, uh, as we go through our lives, you know, go through the different commitments, the different attachments that we go through, that Allah is uh, to remain one within our hearts, that Allah is one, and uh, in our hearts as well, Allah stays one, but as we know, and we'll discuss inshallah going forward, that going through this world, many different things become like idols, become our attachments, and so we want to remind ourselves that this oneness is also a centric uh, that exists. So to begin with Al-Wahid and Al-Ahad, um, they come from the same root and represent oneness, but they're used in different contexts. Al-Wahid means the one, and scholars have commented how uh, this is not a one, like a number in a sense that there's one, but rather that Allah is one, and in that Allah is singular. Uh, without any equal, that there's just one that stands out and uh, without any kind of comparison, um, but it points more to a singularity than just to uh, a, a numeric, you know, digit. Um, and so Allah is wahid in this existence, as one is in his existence, meaning that he cannot be divided or split into parts um, uh, like anything else that exists in creation. Um, Al-Ahad, on the other hand, indicates more of the uniqueness of Allah, uh, that it's used when negating the existence of anything else. Um, the Quran lifts up how no one is comparable to Allah. No one is comparable to, uh, to Allah uh, in any sense of the meaning or any sense of the word. Um, the name of Al-Ahad, uh, we see the significance lifted up uh, as well in uh, Surah Ikhlas, um, in uh, you know, a chapter that many of us know of, that uh, that say Allah is the one, Allah is unique, Allah is without equal, without any kind of, um, you know, comparison in a sense. But the Prophet ﷺ lifted up how this chapter, this short chapter that many of us know, you know, just reciting or growing up and learning, uh, has the worth or is comparable to about one third of the Quran um, that, uh, you know, it was related in a tradition that um, the Sahaba were talking to the Prophet and uh, had, you know, had this question and had this kind of concern of being able to recite a third of the Quran every night um, before going to sleep. And so the Prophet said, you know, reciting um, uh, Surah Ikhlas and the the same worth that is that is there the same meaning is is conveyed within those short verses within um, a third of the Quran there and so just to see the significance of uh, this name that it's not just indicating a digit it's not just indicating a theological concept of uh, one versus three versus two but it's also indicating this aspect of uh, Allah. Uh, above all, of, uh, and distinguished in this aspect. And so these names remind us really what this religion is about, that at the end of the day, regardless of the layers of complexity we may add on, or the different, uh, you know, the uh, theological um, concepts we developed, or the doctrines we developed, at the end of the day, one thing that we can 
find that solace in is that Allah is Al-Wahid and Al-Ahad at the base of it. The Kulhu Allah Wahad is Allah, the one, the singular, the unique. Um, the effect that unity has is not just in the aspect of giving a uh, a comfort with respect to theological doctrine or, or to have some comfort within one's uh, belief in that aspect, but also on the heart. Um, we see the effect that this aspect of unity has um, on the heart in the example of Bilal radiallahu anhu that uh, when he was persecuted, not only just when he came to Islam and was uh, you know converted to Islam, but when he was put to the test, when he was put to uh, a, a space that that nearly killed him, um, you know his only words were ahadun ahad, just saying that Allah is uh, is not just one, but Allah is Ahad, not just Allah is Wahid, but Allah is Ahad, that uh, this negated any other claimed di divinity. Um, and it was a conviction in Allah's oneness. There was a full submission that Bilal uh, lifted up in those, uh, in those words, that it was not that, uh, you know, any words of pleading or crying for mercy or anything like that, but it was a, a, a statement of submission in a sense that, uh, let you know, when, when told that, uh, just say that, you know, just curse the prophet, just renounce your faith and we'll let you go. But know that Allah is one, that ahadun ahad, that one God, only one. He is one, unique, only one. Uh, and to see that the what that had on the impact of a slave who was at the absolute margins of that society to make him feel empowered enough to where he was bold enough to go up against his oppressors and those who uh, had him down at the point of death, that he wasn't scared of that. Uh, and that's what that ahad brings. That's what that wahid brings is that uh, strength within one's heart when they're fully submitted to know that they are one in this in this oneness and that they have nothing to fear. And so his names as such should for us negate any other false idols in our hearts, whether it's money, whether it's the concern with status, whether it's other people um, that we may build up to the level of an idol, uh, just to be con cognizant that at the end of the day, Allah is the one who is worthy of this kind of a conviction um, and that nothing that we can create or that nothing that is within this world is worthy of that same level of convictions. And so when we live with this name, uh, it invites a submission to Allah alone and oftentimes submission for us in our post quote unquote enlightened phase uh, is, is misconceived in the sense that um, submission is not one in which we are living with a heavy yoke on our back or uh, you know having to take on many of the connotations that we have, but submission is one of removing the attachments to everything else, to, to not bow to any of the other uh, things that demand our attention in this world that might not be worthy of it, uh, and submitting ourselves only to uh, the one true God, uh, and not submitting ourselves to uh, the power that money may have in our lives, the power that uh, our jobs may have, or our concern of our status, or anything else that might put a chain around us and, and hold us hostage, that we won't submit to anything else other than Allah. Um, and so we ask ourselves in this aspect, is Allah one in our life? We want to make sure we were sincere to Allah, that we don't put anything or anyone above Allah. It oftentimes happens in relationships that we have close attachments with that a person becomes so focused at our center and that when that person goes away, we feel like we've lost our religion. We feel like our life can't go on because of this person. And thinking what connotations did we have? What significances did we apply to that person? Um, that may otherwise be would have been applied to, to the level of a god um, and thinking um, just how significant it is when when we apply this to someone or when we do this and what's the theological significance are we being sincere to Allah when we put this much of an investment in something whether it's our job or a spouse or someone of significance or something of significance and when it goes away we basically feel like we have nothing to live for are we being sincere with Allah uh, sincere with respect to our beliefs, our deeds, our intentions. Um, want to be aware, want to be aware uh, of what we are associating in a sense with Allah. What, what is that idol that is in our life? Uh, we want to be sure to renew our faith. It's not just one time thing. You say, uh, you know, you're shahada and you're done. You say it every time you pray. Uh, it is a constant renewal of intention, whether you realize it or not, but a renewal of your faith and to really mean it because sometimes we do get dragged away in different spaces. And so we want to be mindful of our relationship to Allah. Um, doing the wither prayer, um, the 
uh, Prophet Sallam lifted up that uh, Allah is witter and loves what is witter, uh, what is unique or sing, uh, singular. Uh, so observe the witter, the witter prayer uh, as related in Tirmidhi. So thinking about if we aren't doing the witter prayer after Isha, um, when would be a better time to start than Ramadan? Uh, maybe that would, can be a goal for each of us here in a sense to, to be able to start that regularly because that's these are acting on these aspects of this name is not just to recognize what's in one's heart, what's in one's mind and to clear up that, but also to practically um, act on these names and act, uh, uh, act in accordance to these names. And one of these aspects is to be able to incorporate that within um, our own uh, ritual worships. And then the last name we have here is naturally going along this aspect of oneness. Is the name of As-Samad. Uh, As-Samad, as we mentioned, is also uh, mentioned in Surah Ikhlas, uh, the you know kind of paragon surah of of, of Islamic theology in a sense, and and of God's uh, uh, aspects that says that Kulhu Allahu Ahad Allahu Samad that Allah is the refuge. That when we know that Allah is one, it should lead us to know that Allah is As-Samad the uh, eternal refuge, as well as what that implies for us in our lives and our existence, that uh, al-samad is defined as eternal, remains unaffected and unchanged and has uh, is, is something that's solid, that has no holes or emptiness. And uh, al-Ghazali specifies that samad is the one to whom uh, one turns in need and the one who is intended for our desires and the ultimate dominion culminates within a samad uh, and uh, imam ibn al-qayyim says that the one to whom uh, that a samad is the one to whom hearts flee both in hope and in reverence so all of our needs are fulfilled in a samad uh, in the unshakableness the uh, power that is found within a samad but also that there's no power outside of a samad that can overpower uh, this this attribute and our, our refuge within it and the prophet sallam uh, encourage us to turn to Allah with all of our needs, even the most minor. Um, there's a hadith uh, that lifts up that even if your sandal strap breaks, ask Allah for, for all of your needs. And even if it's something as minor as that, as related in Tirmidhi. Um, so the living with al samad the incorporation of this is to go to Allah with every need. When we recognize that Allah is the one, Allah is the one in our life, uh, the one in our belief uh, to whom our attention is due, to whom our fixation is due, to whom our worship is due, our concern, our ibadat, all that stuff that we might attribute to uh, the various idols in our life. Um, not that we don't have concern for those things or regard for those things, but we do to a healthy level, but we don't put it on a pedestal and say that our life can't go on if we don't have these things, but to truly realign and recalibrate our personal um, connection to Allah, uh, and then going to Allah with every true need, that if we're short on money, if we're short on certain resources, if we're having a tough time in our uh, relationships or our marriages, that we we go to Allah with these things. We, we, we don't have a fixation on just one individual. Of course, we go through proper you know, channels of support that exist in our world to, to help with these things. But at the end of the day, um, when we have this reliance, we truly rely on Allah. Uh, we ask Allah to that uh, Allah is a refuge for people and a reminder for Allah. And that uh, in addition to living with these names, we learn Allah's names, that Samad, the one who gives us refuge, is the gateway to understanding the, others, the other names uh, that we encounter previously and that we encounter going forward because Allah protects us um, from all that is around. And we, we go to Allah in any state that we are for this refuge. So inshallah, we ask Allah to uh, remind us of the oneness that is Allah uh, in our lives that are so attached to so many other things and that in this oneness, uh, Allah also brings about a refuge for us um, and, and a source of comfort as we draw closer to Allah, uh, draw less attached to the things that are holding us down this world so that we may become even better in our practice, in our uh, deen and in our service to the world around us because we're free of the attachments around and now we can serve all that is around, uh, inshallah, for Allah's pleasure uh, and for the most good. So inshallah, I mean, we ask Allah to help us in that regard. And uh, until next time, we'll see you all tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.